well, after the last vessel that I did, towards the end I realized that I was having a lot of problems because of the foot problem that I had. So I decided to put one up and what I did is from the rough blank, what, even without the faceplate, I just reversed it right over my chuck, put a jam chuck on the insert inside in my life center and I made a tenon right on the outside of the staves and I got it on the pressure. So the theory is that while it's on the pressure it's assisting with the uh, the compound system and I also know that I have a good grip and I'm not going to concentrate on the foot area at least not for the time being. I will work on the foot area way towards the end. So let's see how that works out. the uh, whole piece pretty well rounded off okay nice and flat just needs the a little bit of sanding This little step right here will assure you that you got a nice flat surface for the next piece. But I still got a little bit of a wedge here, so that means that I would have to cut this down to this point. But either way, it's going to end up being that that much because I'm going to round this over on the, the final stages when I do the other rings. So this was the idea that I had which I wasn't able to do it yesterday due to the fact that I never got the foot to really dry up. I'm gonna sharpen up my gouge. So still gonna go easy with this. Not too aggressive, but to go a lot easier. Big difference on the method that I've uh, chosen right now to uh, attach this. Almost there. All my cuts look pretty good. Just gonna go in there one more time. For me to get to this, I have to let this dry up. Uh, a half an hour, and I'd be able to round this over slightly. Now, I made this this size, size. I could have gone a little bit bigger if I wanted to bulge this up at this point, but I think I want to take it from back here to round this over from here into the next piece. The next piece is also made up and it's ready to, to be going. So let me see how this looks for size. And size wise, it's perfect. So this is gonna be very little round over on this. Since I got that much to take over, uh, take off on this, I'll end up putting this up in my chuck, 
reverse and threw it up on the lathe rather than the uh, disc sand that, that would take a long time for me to cut all the way up to the stop edge. So we'll see what I do with that. Uh, there are many ways I could gem chuck it in here, put a little circle in the middle of this between centers and that would be enough even if I wanted to go that route as far as how to mount this and how to throw it up. For an hour or so for this to dry out. If I decide to do anything in here at this point it might shift on me, it might come off. So what I gotta do is uh, finalize the neck. I'll make the neck in a way that I can grab it back on a tin so I can flip it over, do the base of it and once I flip it back it will be a hundred percent. Stick around, be back later. My assistant, Elias, offered to come and help. Uh, so I'm going to have him do his uh, favorite job in the whole wide world, which is sand, wet sanding. So uh, <laughs> maybe this one will come out a little bit better than the last one with his uh, hand in it. So. Hello, YouTubers. My grandfather tells me he's the rebel, but I'm the real rebel. Well, if you're the real rebel, why don't you get going and start wet sand? Elias wants to wet sand, his favorite job in the whole world. Right here, my, my friend. Do one section at a time, okay? You do the whole front and then you step up to the side. Okay. Wet it up. There's plenty of water. And I think you got new water, right? Yeah. So I'm going to make a top for it. I got the center more or less marked over here. And uh, just going to put it in between centers against my jaws and of course bring my pipe center in. And I'm uh, not going to do a lot of turning on this so for what I have to do that's sufficient to hold it in place. Yes, 
Okay, just gotta shave it. Perfect fit. No, perfect fit. No, I, it's the weight. It, that's it was here. just funny that as soon as you said it. But that's good. So now clean it up and Make the pot. you're gonna have sanding to do. Yay! My favorite. All types of sanding on a Okay, let's check to see how it fits, if I'm going to be able to reverse it and do the top so we can make a little piece for it too. And I think that this one should be able to fit in there like this. I'm going to work the outside first, shape the way that I want it to be shaped, and make a little hole in the middle. And then we're going to make a little finial. This way, but uh, for something small like a uh, finial, absolutely. So I center it more or less. Don't tighten it up all the way. Bring the life center in and center it on the outside. little bit of pressure just a little bit and tighten it up now Well, on this one, as you can see, I went a very different route. I made a tenon instead of putting the base to it. Then added the very top ring without any difficulty and again kept it between centers and I was able to pull it up and I will make the, the foot the same idea as this. flat surface here it's deep enough 
for what I want it to do uh, for the foot and then I'll be able to shape the foot whichever way I want. I'm just going to do a little flat area about the same depthness as this and that way my foot will have this recess or this groove in here to accept both both pieces and it will have something to end up on the inside. Let's take a look at that. I want both the inside and the outside to be the same depthness so I'm not playing with the different uh, measurements when I'm doing the, the, the foot. So that's established. That's how deep I need to go inside here as well. I got that in, took a little pressure, but it's a nice tight fit between the two. Nothing is going to be slipping on this one way or the other. Put this back in on the mouthpiece and go in between centers, apply a little bit of pressure to that so it sits as deep as it will go into the uh, into the base which I'm pretty sure that it's all the way in That's the one that I'm going to be putting up on this piece. Like I said, that's uh, one of the kings of Portugal sitting on a throne. And nice and easy. And again, Go with some medium CA and that's how I will attach it and the depthness is fine. There we go. Urn number two. And uh, the lid it's really a tight lid. Um, you actually have to use like a, a putty knife or something to open it up once you close it. Um, so, uh, oh, I didn't want to close it, but I'll close it. It's uh, got an ebony finial maple lid, maple base, and uh, this was a pine ring. That I had made up. I just wanted something that was made made up already uh, to speed this up. Not that it would have taken that long to make up a ring, uh, but I would have to dig up maple that's kind of buried in in there. All I had was a small piece enough to make this. So there it is. It's got the king sitting on his throne uh, with two knight shields on the side of him. I just finish up with a hollowing tool, just this little top edge and make sure that it met up nicely with this transition. It uh, really worked out really well. Um, so if I was going to do a tutorial, uh, this should have been it because it would have shown you the proper way. But this little ring over here, also this lip, uh, 
gave it a nice little detail. Uh, it's got a little bead in there. And then I got the double the bead going up in here again uh, next to the finial. The finial is a good size for its proportion. And uh, I think the whole thing came out really good. The uh, diameter on this is uh, probably around uh, six and a half inches diameter. Yep, six and a half. And the total height is uh, nine inches. So from the base of the finial, it's seven and a quarter inches basically to the bottom. So thanks for watching and we'll see you again. And don't forget, like and share. Take care.